continuing, Satan's throne comes up in 2.13. Let me just look, read that verse. This is to the church at Pergamum. I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. You hold fast my name. You do not deny my faith, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. So there we have a very obvious reference to persecution again, but we have this Satan's throne. Now, there's no specific Old Testament touch point for this. Indirectly, though, in Revelation, Satan is connected to the dragon. There's, there's the dragon figure in several passages. Uh, Revelation 12 is one of those, but there's at least one other. And the dragon, of course, is a clear chaos image. Now, th this, you know, this imagery prompts On to write this. This is, again, from his commentary. The fact that thronos, throne, is articular, it has the definite article, suggests that the author is alluding to a specific throne, either literally or figuratively, which he expects the readers to recognize. The throne of Satan, i.e. the throne of the dragon, is mentioned again in 13, Revelation 13, verse 2, where the dragon, previously identified by such aliases as the devil and Satan in 12, 9, the dragon gives it to the beast from the sea, which clearly suggests the association of the throne with the imperial cult. The throne of the beast is again mentioned in 1610, when the fifth bowl angel plunges his kingdom in darkness by pouring out the bowl of plagues on his throne. In neither 132 nor 1610, however, is the throne localized, while in Revelation 2.13 it is placed in Pergamon. So basically, again, to, to decipher all that, On is, is arguing that, again, that this, this throne of Satan or throne of the dragon, you know, is connected with the beast of the sea. Again, a very obvious chaos imagery here. He's going to say, look, this is going to be associated with the kingdom, a, you know, a kingdom, an authority, a power that represents chaos. And, and what does... <laughs> What's the term that John is going to use in Revelation for this kingdom? Babylon. Okay? So, it, it, and, and who's the power of the day? Well, it's Rome. It's very obvious. So, you're dealing with a reference, this throne of Satan, in this case in Pergamon, and then, you know, others, it's, it's not as specific. You're dealing with imperial authority. And then here we go again. You have certain Jews that are turning their comrades, their, their, their brethren, even that they have this theological disagreement with, you know, they're, they're turning them over to the secular authorities for, for torture and death. Okay, this is the problem. So what about the throne of Satan, though? I'll, I'll you know, throw this in, even though there's no clear Old Testament referent other than chaos imagery, which, which goes back to Babylon, which, again, is a term that John's going to use in the book. So it, it should be, you know, put those data points together, connect those dots. It should be sort of obvious as, you know, that this is an imperial power that is opposed to the kingdom of God. But On lists several options for interpreting the throne in the history of scholarship. And I, th I thought I'd throw this in because some of you out there might find this interesting as to where, you know, is there a place in Pergamon that, that you know, we would, we would associate with this? Like, like if, we, if we could go back in time and we were in Pergamon and we walk up to somebody on the street and say, hey, you know, where's the... <laughs> Where's the, the, the throne of the dragon, or probably better, because that sounds pejorative to, to a pagan, you know, living in Pergamon. Hey, where's the seat of authority? You know, where, where would I go, like, where all, you know, all the power is held, you know? What, what, what spot in the city would that be? So that, that's what, that's what uh, On is trying to, to get at here. You know, what, you could use certain phrases, and, and if you were talking to a citizen, they, oh, it's this place or that place. There are certain candidates, okay, as to how this question could be answered. And here's his list. I'm, I'm not going to go through all his notes here, but this, this comes from his commentary. Uh, number one, the Temple of Augustus is a candidate, perhaps originally built at the foot of the Acropolis of Pergamon by permission of Augustus in 29 BC. So this is going to be around when John you know, is, is writing. The specific site, though, for us, for moderns, though, has never been located. It does, it's no longer exists. And Owen comments, this view coheres well with the view expressed in the Testament of Job. Again, this is a Second Temple Jewish text. Testament of Job 3, 5, and 4, 4, where a pagan temple is called Hatapos to Satana, the place of Satan. So that, that's a candidate. Temple of Augustus, place of Satan, according to the Testament of Job. Okay, let's put that on the list. That, that, that might be it. 
Number two, the great altar of Zeus Soter. That, you know, it, 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 that's Zeus the Savior, okay? This elaborate column structure was constructed during the reign of Eumenes II, 197 to 59 BC, to commemorate a Pergamene victory of the Gauls in 190 BC. It was decorated with elaborate bas reliefs depicting the Gigantomachy, that is the battle between the Olympian gods and the giants. And, like the Temple of Augustus in Roma, was located on the Acropolis. Reportedly, this Acropolis could be seen from all sides at a great distance. Further, the equation of the altar and the throne is an ancient one. Now, uh, I've actually put a link here on the the episode page so that you can go look at a a reconstruction of the great altar of Zeus Soter with the Gigantomachy, the battle between the Olympian gods and giants, the sculptures that that how it would have looked because there there are pieces of this that remain, and there there are actually several projects. And when when I was in um, oh let's see we when I was in Vienna for an International Society of Biblical Literature meeting, boy this was years ago. Um, they had part of this uh, on loan, I think, from the museum at Berlin, which is where you could go see it. And it, it's you know it, it's pretty spectacular, you know, the recreation, but. It's, it's obviously associated with the wars between the gods and the giants. And so this becomes a candidate for Satan's throne. Uh, again, nobody's sure, but it's kind of an interesting possibility. Third, the judge's bench or tribunal where the proconsul sat to judge could be referred to here as the throne of Satan. The Roman proconsul, again, it's, it's imperial authority. This is where the, the imperial, you know, figure who's going to decide cases where he sits. The Roman proconsul resided at Pergamon, and it was to Pergamon that Christians in the surrounding area were brought after being denounced by informers, even at a later date. Fourth, the temple of Asclepios. Asclepios was linked in special ways with the symbol of the serpent, which Christians associated with Satan. Okay, Revelation 12, 2 Corinthians 11. I mean, so this becomes a possibility too. And number five, Pergamon as a center of persecution, in other words, really the city itself. The throne of Satan, the dominion of Satan, again, just is, is Pergamon generally, which caused the oppression of Christians, okay? So that there, there's a possibility there. And, you know, on sites, verse 13 here about Antipas being slain, again, a martyr, so on and so forth, where Satan dwells, you know, so maybe it's just a reference to the, to the city or the town. It's certainly not a Jewish group, you know, it, it's it's the locus of of authority. Number six, he offers Pergamon as a major center of the imperial cult. Maybe, again, it's the city for that reason. Maybe, number seven, Pergamon is is to be thought of as the seat of the throne of Satan because it was a center for Greco-Roman pagan religion generally. The city was filled with idols. Maybe that's why. And lastly, he suggests the shape, it might refer to the shape of a hill on which the city was built. You know, having some sort of serpentine feature. But I mean, honestly, who knows? There are some good candidates there. I, I, I kind of favor the great altar of Zeus. Um, but again, I'm not basing that on anything other than just the nature of the altar and, and the fact that, you know, Zeus claimed to be the most high. You know, we, we've talked about this in, I think, in the first or second episode of this series, uh, how Zeus was referred to as Hupsistos, the most high. And that, that's, you know, what, the episode we talked about the name. Um, if that's the case, it could have been associated by, with, you know, with, by Christians with the desire for another deity to be called most high, which would take their minds back to Isaiah 14. Okay. And so on and so forth, you know, rebellion in the council. And again, I, I like the great altar of Zeus because it's about rebellion in the council and these wars and, you know, who, who knows the, the honest answer is who knows, but that I, I kind of prefer that one just because it has more than just one sort of connection to it.